testing the iPhone 14 Pro right now with the internal microphone. It's supposed to be a bit better in low light with a new camera. So also in studio setups like that. How does it look? The camera is not even my favorite feature on this iPhone, also not the dynamic island with the worst name ever. It is the 120 frames per second refresh rate of the screen or promotion like Apple calls it, because it completely feels like a different phone. The animations are so smooth. Now I try cinematic mode. Does it look better? Does it give enough bokeh in the background? Does it look realistic? Probably not, I think my edges are too soft. But anyway, we're not talking about the iPhone 14 Pro or my favorite feature of this phone today. We are talking about my favorite feature in DaVinci Resolve on the color page today because that actually makes a huge difference. So let's get into it. Maybe you know this effect already, but you might not know that you can use this effect in different ways. And the effect that I'm talking about is the glow effect. But instead of using it in a way that only makes lights glow or stuff like that, I use it to make my whole image a bit softer and more contrasty at the same time. And it gives it a very pleasing look. So this is before I already added my correction LUT here to go from lock to rec 709. And I also did some exposure adjustments. As you can see, it already looks pretty good, like most people who would be happy with it. But if I turn the glow effect on now, that really puts the cherry on the top. It's more contrasty, but let, let me show you how it would look if I only apply contrast. So this is how that would look. It also looks a bit better, but you see, for example, here that the transition from the highlights into the dark midtones is pretty harsh. And when I do that with the glow effect, it is a lot smoother. But as mentioned, there are multiple ways on how you can use this effect. So let me show you a few more examples here. Here I actually did pretty much the same, just with an opacity of 0.25. It kind of makes the shot brighter, but also emphasizes my hands and the controller here a little bit. And that can help you in certain shots to drive the attention of the viewer. But now let me come to some shots where it really makes a difference, especially the first one here. Here I applied two glow effects. Let me turn them off. Now you see it's already a really nice image to be honest. But now when I turn the first glow effect on, you see that I use that to add this anamorphic lens flare here. Then the second one is again what I did before with that soft light composite type to enhance the overall image. Let me show you how I did it with the anamorphic effect because that's quite non-standard. You have to make some adjustments. That's the glow effect now with standard settings. And the first thing that I want to do is to bring the spread to the very right and the A HV ratio also to the very right. And now I drag the shine threshold until I'm happy with that lens flare. But at the same time, you also see now that it affects the mountains here, the sky in the background, and that doesn't really look good. That doesn't look like an anamorphic lens. And that is why I add a power window here. And then I go to tracking and I track that. So you see, in that case, I use the glow effect to add this anamorphic lens flare. Completely different use case, a completely different look, but it's just a few settings that you have to change and it makes it super easy. Now, next shot here, this is also where I just added the standard glow effect as I showed you in the first place. But what I actually wanted to show you is when you look at the left part of her jacket here, that it also enhances this part. Like it looks like there would shine more sun on it and that also makes her pop a little bit more. If you look closely, you see that it is this glow effect actually, but no one actually noticed that. It really looks like it would be brighter in that area and that just with one click basically, that's so good. And the next example here is also again, just with a soft light, the standard glow effect that I always use at opacity 0.2. When I turn that off and on, you also see that it's a very subtle enhancement but the bright parts of her face now pop so much more just because of that effect, while also making the gradients in her face here really smooth. So that effect can enhance pretty much every image. I actually used it in every video that I published in pretty much every clip over the past three months, as far as I remember, because you see, it's just a few clicks and your whole clip or your whole video actually looks so much better. So. 
I don't know any reason why not to use it. I'm not even sure if you recognized that over the past three months that I use this effect or not, or maybe you thought it comes from my Fujifilm camera or so. Just leave me know in the comments below. That would actually be nice to know. But aside from that, you probably recognize that all of those clips already look really good even without this glow effect. And that is not color grading or anything like that. That is really how you use your camera. And I recently made a tutorial about that that you will find here in the corner. There I show you exactly how to do that, how to film more cinematic with your camera. So if you want to get results like that, then watch this video. Aside from that, I hope to see you in future videos and don't forget to subscribe.